Sports Nation, welcome back. My name is Rob Kleinen. Along with me today is Todd Sears, a former professional baseball player. Todd, how are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, tell us a little about yourself. Um, I grew up in uh, Iowa, just outside of Des Moines, a town called Ankeny. And, uh, you know, I grew up playing playing all sports and then uh, kind of focused on baseball and basketball as I got a little bit older. Um, both my parents were coaches, so I always kind of was always around sports. And, and that really helped um, develop a, a drive and a love for, for being competitive and, and the hard work and, and stuff like that. And um, So I went to high school in Ankeny. Um, was drafted in the 19th round by the, at the time, California Angels, and this was in 1994. Um, I elected not to sign and uh, play professionally, um, so I went to play baseball at the University of Nebraska and was there for three years and was drafted again, this time by the uh, Colorado Rockies in the third round. Um, and then I, I did choose to, uh, to sign and then play professionally at that point. So when you uh, geared, when you were younger and you geared, towards baseball and basketball from those two sports what pushed you into the baseball that's kind of a you know an interesting story I always thought that um, I was going to play college basketball up until my senior year of high school so I was actually recruited by more teams and schools for basketball than I was for baseball and then all of a sudden um, going into uh Iowa plays baseball, high school baseball in the summer. So after my uh, my junior year, of, I just had a you know a breakout season. Um, so going into my my senior year in high school, you know a bunch of scouts started you know talking to me a little bit and uh, kind of really opening my eyes to you know poss- the possibility of playing professionally. Um, and so that kind of really kind of started to get more of my focus on on baseball than, than basketball at the time. But it was a long process to do that. But you are. You, you do have height. What is your where is your height? Um, six six. Six six. All right. So you you what position in basketball did you play? Forward. Okay. All right. High school probably more of a center at the time. But. So you went to uh, Nebraska, and you got drafted by the Colorado Rockies. What year was that? Ninety seven. Ninety seven. So how long? How many? How many years did you play professional baseball? Total, I played eleven seasons. When you got drafted by the Rockies, I'm assuming you were, you were in the minor leagues, or did you go straight to the majors? So, all professional teams, and there, there's been a couple rare exceptions, um, but just about everybody who is drafted and plays professionally starts off at the lowest rung on the ladder, um, that, and that's typically what's called short season A. So, when I was drafted... <clears throat> And signed with the Rockies, I was sent to um, Portland, Oregon, and played for the Portland Rockies at the time. They're they're considered a short season A team. So most of the guys who were drafted that year, and some of the guys who were drafted in the year before, um, were on that team. And so that was really my my first introduction to uh, to minor league baseball. Um, and so <clears throat> most teams have about one level. Um, sometimes two levels. A ball might have two or three different teams on the on the A level, and then usually you get to uh, double A and triple A, and then the big leagues. So there is quite a long um, ladder route to get to the major leagues. And I think I eventually made. I was drafted in '97, and then um, eventually got called up in 2002. So that was about you know five six, five, five seasons yeah. before I got up there. And that's that's about average when. Looking at a lot of guys. So you, when you said you were drafted, going back, you got drafted <clears throat> the first time. It decided not to take that. Was there a reason you didn't take that? Um, no reason. Um, in particular, I think just looking back, there was no way I was physically ready or mentally ready um, to play professional baseball at the time. I, you know. After all my experiences of, you know, pretty much 11 years playing baseball, it's, it's such a grind in the minor leagues. You have to, you know, baseball is a game of failure. And so at the time, I've, you know, I've been pretty successful in every sport that I played. And so there, there's no way I would have been ready to deal with, you know, the, the 0 for 30s coming out of high school. How old were like you when, you when you got drafted the first time? The first time I was 18. 18. And the second time? That would have been 20. 21. 21. Okay. So, 
So are you saying that it's it's difficult? Um, maybe you weren't mental. You, so you were saying you weren't really mentally ready at that age. Not close. Okay. All right. Um, let me ask you another question here. So in '97, you were drafted by the Rockies. You played for the Portland. Portland Rockies. That, that was their first team. Were mm-hmm. they a uh, uh, single A? They, so they all kind of go through their their progression. So I'll kind of start go back a little bit farther. So um, they also have what's called extended spring training. So this is a lot of guys who um, high school guys when they get drafted they'll go to extended spring training, which is just below short season. So a lot of the the college guys who were just drafted will go to um, the short season. A ball team. Then there is another level above that that's full season A, and then there's high A. These are different teams. These are different teams, different okay. levels, okay. all the way up. So right at the time, and I think it's going to change now because the minor leagues, uh, the whole system is going to change a little bit. Um, but at the time, so there was one, two, three. There was, the Rockies had four teams that were considered A level. Then they had one team at Double A, and then one team at Triple A, and then the big league. So they had uh, six teams. All full of players playing in the minor leagues at the time. A lot of players. It is a lot of players. <laughs> so, um, when you got on the Portland Rockies, did you have to stay there for a certain amount of time per co- your contract? Or did they just move you around and just say, Todd, you're ready to go up to this level of single A, uh, or we're bumping you up to double A? How did that work? That, that's a good question right there. A lot of it kind of depends on, you kind of lay out a level per season. You know, that, that's kind of like the average track. You know, each season is one level, and hopefully you do well enough, make it to the, up to the next level. And there are a lot of times where injuries, trades, stuff like that, where they'll say, hey, we're going to move you up now to double A um, because, you know, here's the situation. And so there, there are a lot of circumstances where, um, they'll just move guys around, you know, depending on needs, depending on um, prospects and, you know, certain things that they want to develop in guys, you know, earlier um, or later. They, you know, high level, um, high picks out of high school, they might take a slower approach than, you know, high picks out of college. They might want to push them along a little bit faster than the high school guys. So it's, it's kind of, you know, or, organization specific on how they do it. Um, and then also it's it's an individualistic approach to every player on what they can handle. So how long did it take you to go through the different levels of single A to be bumped up to a double A team? And, and then is there also the levels in double A like there were, there, there were in single A? So I was pretty much a year per level. That was that was a track. So when I was drafted in '97, I signed in July, and at that point the season's almost over, and that's why it's short season. It goes from pretty much when the draft to okay. you know August or September or something like that. So that was my first year. '97 was with the Portland Rockies. Okay, and then once that season was over, the next year I went to Low A, and that was in Asheville, North Carolina, and so I was there the whole season. Um, then the next year I went to uh, Salem Avalanche, also in. Uh, um, Virginia, actually. Um, I was there all season. And then after that, I went up to double A in, uh, with the Carolina Mudcats. And so that, then I kind of had an interesting path where I was traded midway through that year to the Twins. And so I went to their double A team in New Britain, Connecticut. And so finished out uh, most of the season there. And then at that point, I was called up to triple A to finish the season because they were in the playoffs or in the triple A um, playoffs. And so I finished that season with the triple A in Salt Lake City. So when let's say kids look up to you, you know, they're playing they're you know, they're playing ball and they're enjoying life and they're they're dreaming of being a MLB star. What is the life like living and just, you know, living life in the minors? It's not as easy as everyone thinks. You know, I always, everyone would always say, oh, you play professional baseball, you make a lot of money and driving. It's like, no. Um, I remember in A-ball making about $900 a month 
I think that was, that was my, my paycheck, $900 a month. And you got to pay rent, food, all these other things that, that you have to uh, provide for. Um, and so <clears throat> in addition to that, you have 12 or 13 hour bus rides. You're, you're leaving right after the game. You're getting in at, you know, six, seven or eight in the morning, hopefully get a couple hours sleep in the hotel and then go to the game that night. And, and you still have to perform every day. So you got paid $900 a month to play professional baseball. Single A. <laughs> Single A. Yeah. Now, was there increases in pay? As you moved up the levels of single A and then started to climb up double A and triple A, yep. there there were increases. Not much, not much. It was still you still have to you know save and keep track of you know every every penny that you had. Um, and then after a few years, in in you're a little more of a you know a veteran minor league player. There there are different ways to to make a little bit more um, at the time. And you know if you're on what's called the forty man roster. Um, if you get called up, you can come back and make a little bit more when you, if you come back down too. So there, there are ways um, to make more, but yeah, it's, you know, for a few years and, and A ball and double A, it's, you know, it's, it's a grind. It's so tough. were you mainly living out of hotels or did you have a, a apartment or how'd that work? We had an apartment, but I mean, there's, I remember in, in double A when I was traded, all of my, we were, I was traded on the road. All of my stuff was in our apartment in Raleigh, North Carolina. And so they had to come get all my stuff, ship it to me. I was already gone. I drove out that, uh, actually flew out from, uh, where was I? Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and so flew out there, no, Orlando. Um, but anyway, flew out there and then they had to mail and send all my stuff in. Did you have like roommates and stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think we had, at one point we had four or five guys living in, a, you know, Three bedroom, three bedroom house, stuff like that. So it's um, a lot of. It was fun though. I, looking back, it was, it was a grind. It was tough, but you know the the friendships that you know are developed, and because right. you're, you're spending so much time with you know all these all these players, you you, you build very good relationships with all of them. And, and that's that's something that's. And you were saying you moved around as far as teams so frequently. It seemed like almost yeah. I mean, there's some guys that might be three or four teams in one year. Maybe they're moving, 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 and, and stuff like that. And, but, you know, that's what's cool about, um, you know, the, the baseball side of things is, I mean, you guy come in, get to know him very quickly, and, and you're buddy-buddy with him. And so it's that camaraderie develops very quickly. Do you ever, do you ever, are you still in contact with any of these people? Some, yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay, awesome. Um, another question I have for you is, so it took you, you said approximately a year to keep moving up, um, and the and, and the lifestyle uh, in the minors was was pretty grindful, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't until AAA when you were able to fly from one location to the other. Uh, how long? And you were there in AAA for about a year. So that's when. <clears throat> That's when things started slowing down a little bit. So, so I was traded in 2000. So I went to the Twins and then um, finished the 2000 season in AAA. Then played with the Twins another season in AAA, um, and that was 2001. I had a, I had a pretty good year. I was I was thinking I could have possibly been called up at the time. I wasn't. Um, and then I played again AAA 2002 with the Twins. And then I was called up at the end of that season in AAA. So for the majors, it's not like you uh, you move up, you know, your, let's say your contracts were for five years, I don't know. Uh, you play three years in the minors, the last two years you're guaranteed in the majors. It's nothing like that at all. It's like you're in the minors until someone calls and says, I want Todd Sears. That's exactly right. Okay, that's exactly right. And so, you know, you are how it works on the major league side is you're getting, for the most part, there's there's circumstances involved, but you're getting like the major league minimum for about three years, and then after that, depending on how you do, you can you can go for that big contract. Uh, my time, I was up and down. Um, I was my time in the big leagues was usually spent filling in for guys who were on the disabled list. Um, so I I was up there for parts of two seasons. Um, kind of going back and forth, um, 
from AAA in the big leagues for those seasons and, and um, kind of shifting around. So it, it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is if someone is called up to the majors and they are sent back down to the minors twice, they can go back up into the majors? Or how does that work? I mean, can they go back, back and forth as many times? Or is there some sort of stipulation where, all right, Todd's been up here five times, we're, you know, we're done. There is a stipulation. I think you're right with uh, the third time you have to, you would then be placed on waivers and then any team can pick you up. Um, and they could put you in the majors. Yeah. Okay. There, yeah, there, there's a lot of, you know, I, uh, it, it really gets in depth on the rules and, you know, regulations on when it comes to that. But, yeah, there, there's a lot of different rules and once round waivers – um, if no one claims you, then you go back to AAA. If someone claims you, they have to put you up you know, on the major league team, whatever. They, there's probably more into it now um, than when I played. Um, but, yeah, it's, there's a lot of things that I didn't quite understand at the time. I just go where they sent me. Right. Okay. Did you have an agent? Mm-hmm. All right. You had yeah. an agent? Okay. Um, and so when you got drafted by the Rockies and they offered you a contract, like we hear for – you know, in the NFL, you know, this contract's guaranteed so much, and this, you know, the contract is worth this much. What is a contract, a typical contract, like uh, for baseball? So there you have the minor league contract and then the major league contract. The minor league contract is, you know, your, your minor league salary, and it kind of breaks down the different levels. So you can, if you get moved up, you can make more depending on the level. So there's incentives there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's uh, not really incentives, more bonuses if you make make a certain level. You know, okay, you're a double now here. You know, you're making double what you made in a ball. You know, that, that type of thing. Um, and then kind of once you get to the major leagues, it's a yearly contract until you sign a multi-year contract. So the guys who have typically have less than three years, they're pretty much year to year. And, you know, in spring training, you always see, you know, a list of everybody who just re-signed, and that's typically the one-year contract. Okay. Now, there's no guaranteed money for signing the contract or anything. It's just this is your contract for the single – for one year, I guess, for yeah. single A. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. And if they release you, then that's it. You don't, you don't get your money. What teams did you play for your entire career? So in the big leagues, I played with the uh, the Twins and the Padres, and then organization wise, I played. So I was drafted by the Rockies, traded to uh, the Twins, um, then was with them for till two thousand two. Traded to the Padres, um, then I had a back surgery, and that knocked me. That was pretty much my the start of my decline. And then I signed as a free agent with the Mariners, and then finished up with the uh, the Marlins. So five different organizations. And so your your time in the majors, you said two two years, being off and on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Was there any any highlights? Oh yeah, uh, I was I was fortunate um, to even though I wasn't up there very long, I, I had a couple of pretty cool moments. Um, the first one, uh, my first career home run um, was off of uh, Pedro Martinez. So was that he was Boston? He was Boston at okay. the time. That was two thousand and three. And so, you know, here's this, you know, Hall of Fame pitcher that, you know, I I actually faced him six times and I was able to get three hits off him. So, you know, for some reason I just I saw the ball well off him and, and you know, I was I was fortunate to get that uh, that one home run off him too. That was that was in the metro. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, and then my second um, Neat moment was I hit a walk-off home run against the Royals oh, um, really? in the Metrodome as well, and that was, that was 2003 as well. And in about a span of um, just that, a few days. Who is the pitcher? Uh, Albie Lopez. Okay. Albie Lopez. Yeah. It's not around no more, is it? Uh, I don't think so. That was, <laughs> I, that was a long time ago for me. So <clears throat> so, so you had some highlights. A mm-hmm. couple, yeah. Now, uh, what, was the li- what was it like for you? You know, your triple A ball, and they probably call you in the office, or they call you on the phone or something and say, hey, you're, uh, this is your moment. You're going up. It was it was as cool as you would expect. It, you know, our the triple A team at the time in 2002, um, we had a, an amazing team. There's a lot of guys that eventually went up to play for a long time in the, in the big leagues. 
Um, and we just won the AAA World Series. And then, so there was a group of, uh, I think, three or four of us who all kind of were called up together. Um, and I remember just, you know, the first time I was there, we went and that night we went with the general manager and we had to, you know, sign our, you know, the, the contracts or whatever we had to sign. Um, and so that next day we were playing in Detroit. Um, and I just remember walking onto the field and, you know, just kind of everything hit me at once. It's like, you know, everything that I've been working towards and working for is, is right here. And so just, it was just kind of in awe looking at, you know, and Detroit has this really cool um, scoreboard with a couple of huge tigers on there. And it is just really neat. And just looking out there at an empty, huge stadium, it was, it was pretty unreal. And so, and I, I started that night at playing first base and I ended up getting two hits. So, you know, it was, it was a pretty cool experience to um, work so long and so hard and then make it to, make it to the top even just for, for a little bit. So you st- you, you struggled as far as living wise uh, through the minors, and then you get up to the majors. Is there a night and day <laughs> comparison between, you know, uh, living? Oh yeah, yeah. There's there's a big difference. I think, you know, at the time, I, this is probably gone up too, but at the time we were given 120 dollars a day for meal money. You know, in, in the minor leagues, we get maybe 10 dollars a day, eight dollars a day, and so right there is just it's every aspect of what you're doing day in and day out is, is totally different than what you're used to. And it's just like, what's going on here at the time? And so we had a couple, there was a couple, you know, guys who had been around a little while in the twins who I kind of just, they kind of just kind of um, took me under their wings and kind of helped me deal with certain things. And, and so that was, that was pretty helpful at the time, but it was, it was pretty crazy. So what you're saying is you make it to the majors and some of these players are making millions and millions of dollars <laughs> And what you're saying is, you get another hundred twenty dollars a day <laughs> for, <laughs> for when you travel, yeah, for food. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and they feed you at the clubhouse too, and so it's just it, all of a sudden this money's given to you, and it's like, oh, okay, I don't know what to do with it. But so is this while like every day, no matter <clears throat> if you're traveling or what? Only when you travel. Only, Only when, when you travel. hit travel or have games, or even even if you don't. I, if, I, if I remember correctly, anytime you're on the road, that counts as a day. I might be wrong with that, but they just give you a, you know, an envelope filled with cash, and here you go. Mm. So it was one of the perks. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so, and you, so you finished in '03. I was so I was traded to <clears throat> the Padres at the end of '03. I finished the season with the Padres on the last couple weeks, um, and then in '04. Um, I had a back surgery, and that, that knocked me out for the whole year. And then after that, <clears throat> that's when I just signed as a free agent with the Mariners, tried to you know get my strength back, tried to come back, and you know I was able to play a couple more seasons and then finished up with uh, the Marlins, and I think it was 07. 07? Yeah. And you, you currently have a family? Currently have a family. Were, did you have a family or a wife back then in your yep. plane? So place? my last year... Um, was when my daughter was born in 07. And so it was one of those where um, I flew back from, I think I was actually I had another shoulder surgery that year. And then at that point I flew back for uh, her birth. Um, and then I was like, I, I'm good. I I'm, I'm, can't do this anymore type of thing. What, uh, what, was a, what, what was the toll or what was it like for your family or for your wife, I should say, as you were playing ball? Uh, did it take a toll? Was it hard on her? I mean, she, did she kind of adapt to it? She, yeah, she was good with it. I mean, so pretty much our, our whole relationship was that's what we knew. Uh-huh. And so I was gone during the you know the baseball season, um, and she lived and worked here in Kansas City, so she was you know busy here and, and doing stuff like that. And, and so it was you know it worked. And you guys currently live here in the Can- the Kansas City metro area. Mm-hmm. Um, you and uh, Sean, who said how do you pronounce it? Like Sedlicek. Said, yeah. All right. Well, he is a <laughs> he is a also a uh, former professional baseball player. Mm-hmm. Uh, played. He was a pitcher. Mm-hmm. Played for the Royals. Um, so I was wondering if you kind of hit that home run off with him. <laughs> but uh, you two have come together and you have uh, created an organization called Complete Game. Mm-hmm. Now, complete game is sort. It's a baseball club. What? Explain more about complete game. Sure. 
Um, right now we have two locations. We have one uh, in Pleasant Valley and another one in Overland Park. Um, this is our eighth year um, of doing this and kind of what we came together with um, the fact that we just saw that there <clears throat> it didn't really seem like there were um, was a whole lot of quality instruction going on from coaches from um, you know positive mental side learning how to play the game hard play the game the right way um, and so we really kind of put our experiences together to try to create something that would try to benefit the baseball community in Kansas City. Um, and we were fortunate to um, get out of the gates very quickly as far as the number of teams we had, and, and that kept us busy for a while. And and right now we have about 20 teams, and so it's we really make it a point to, um, we value hustle, we value hard work, we value um, playing the game the right way. When you're on the field, you're, you're playing as hard as you can, you're respecting opponents, respecting um, umpires, um, and stuff like that. And it's, you know, a lot of the games I've seen, we don't always see that with other teams. So, you know, um, it can be a very um, harsh environment when you're watching games, yelling at umpires, throwing bats, you know. And so we made it a point to take all of our experiences we picked up from playing professionally and in through our lives and try to try to make it a you know a positive place with top level instruction to help um, as many players as we can play at the college level. As competitive as some of these high schools are, sometimes these high schools have a um, hundred players trying out for twenty spots, and and so there are a lot of good players who um, don't happen to make their high school teams, and so um, that can be a tough situation. Um, but we so with our high school guys. Um, the last few years, we've done a spring high school program that for guys who choose not to play high school, who do not make their high school teams, um, as of now, and I, I think we've had nine players who did not make their high school teams go on and play in college after um, going through our program. I'm not saying our program is what did it, but it just helps build up their confidence because if you don't make the high school team, that, that can be a very humbling experience. Right. It, it could take, you know, <laughs> if your whole goal and motivation you know, playing absolutely pony league on up to high school, and then all of a sudden you don't make it. Kind of be a real defeating uh, experience for that player. So um, that's good that you guys kind of continue, you know, and kind of help that person grow even more. Well, I appreciate uh, you taking the time to uh, to sit down with us. Uh, I think it'd be great for. Uh, people out there who don't know really what is involved right. in playing professional ball before you make it to the big leagues. I uh, just want to say thank you for watching out there. Please subscribe and hit the like button uh, and, and stay tuned for our next video. Thank you so much.